How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Patriot DIY channel. In this video we're going to show you how to build this Christmas tree village display. All right guys, so this is something that I've never really done before, but we're building a Christmas tree village display. It's basically a series of round wooden discs in a Christmas tree shape, starting at three foot disc on the bottom and working our way up to a one foot disc on top. This one is six foot tall and the entire thing is made out of wood. Now I have seen these built before um, using PVC pipe and things like that, but I'm gonna show you how to make it a little bit nicer and it's gonna be something that's easy to assemble and disassemble. Now something like this could really be used for anything. In, in this case, the customer is gonna be using it as a display for her Christmas village, but this could be a great way to display really anything. This is my own design. I've never seen it done quite this way before, and I will have plans in the description below if you wanna get those and build one for yourself. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to build this, but first guys, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell, and give us a thumbs up. We're also gonna have links to all the tools that we're using for this project in the description if you want to get them for yourself. So stick around, I'll show you how to do it. First thing we need to do is cut out the circles for our shelf. And we're gonna be doing that with a circle cutting jig for our router. We'll measure and mark out the center of our circle. We'll install our jig and then we'll start cutting. And we're gonna be cutting at a depth of about a quarter inch at a time until we get all the way through the plywood. For this project, we're gonna need five discs, one at three foot, one at two and a half, one at two foot, one at one and a half, and one at one foot. This jig that we have is able to cut all those circles for us, and I'll have that linked in the description below. Once we have them all cut out, we're gonna go ahead and use our router to put a rounded edge on each one. and then we'll give them all a good sanding. Then we'll drill a 3 8 inch hole in the center of each one and this will make more sense to you in just a minute. Now we're gonna turn our attention to the trunk of the tree. And for this, we're gonna be using two two by threes and we're gonna laminate those together with some wood glue and clamps. and scrape off any of the excess wood glue. And then we're gonna take it over to the table saw and we're gonna mill this down to two inches by two inches. And then we'll take this over to the miter saw and cut it down into more manageable lengths. And now we're gonna round over those edges with a three quarter inch round over bit. Now that's the largest bit I had. If you have a one inch radius bit, that's gonna work better for this project. And you can see that gives us a nice clean rounded edge. And we're gonna do that to all four edges of our two by two. Thank you. 
All right, guys, I think that looks awesome, and I think it's gonna work good for the trunk of our tree. But I do wanna mention something to you guys. Now, it's not necessarily something I did wrong, but it is something I think I would do different. And it's important that you guys understand when you watch these YouTube videos, everything's not always perfect. So what I started out with was a two by two glue of And to make a perfectly round dowel out of a two by two, you're gonna need a one inch round over bit. The biggest I had was three quarters. So if you look at this, there are still some flats on each side. Now I don't think that's a problem. I think it's still gonna look good. I do like this and we're gonna go with it. But if you guys purchase the plans in the description below, we'll be creating a perfect two and a half inch dowel in those plans. Let's keep going. Now we're gonna take this back over to the miter saw and we're gonna cut this down into 15 inch lengths. And now that we have all of our components together, we're gonna to go ahead and try to test fit this and see how it's gonna look. And just with a little careful balancing and... Uh, that's not exactly how I wanted that to go. All right, now back at it. We're gonna take each of those pieces of tree trunk and we're gonna mark out the center on the end of each piece. And then we'll take it over to the drill press and drill our holes on each end. And we're gonna be putting a hanger bolt on one end of each piece. And on the opposite end, we're gonna be putting a threaded T-nut. Our goal here is so that each piece will thread into the other and make assembly and disassembly very easy. Now we're ready to start working on the base of our tree. Now we have a cutoff from the dowel that we made for the trunk of the tree and we left a squared off end and we're gonna be using that to work with the base of our tree. And then we're gonna draw out the shape of the legs and then we'll take all that over to the band saw to cut it out. Now we're making this base and the legs so they all interconnect together. And these notches that we're cutting right now will make more sense to you in just a minute once you see how it all goes together. Now after a little bit of sanding, if you've done this correctly, it should all fit together just right. And now that we've got all our components finished, we're ready to add a coat of stain. Now I think that looks great, but we're gonna go ahead and add one more coat of stain and you can see how that really brings out that really rich brown color. And once that's had time to dry, we're ready to put on our clear coat. And for that, we're gonna be using the Minwax Polycrylic in Semi-Gloss.
we're gonna be applying three coats of this clear coat. And as you can see, we're gonna sand in between each coat with a 320 grit sandpaper. And the result is gonna be a nice, smooth, shiny finish. And then we're ready for assembly. So we're gonna start out with our base and we're gonna go ahead and glue everything up and fit it together. Then we can start assembling the disc and the trunk pieces of our tree. Each piece is gonna be layered one on top of the other and screwed together nice and tight. Uh-oh, that's not looking too good. All right guys, so as you could see in that previous video, we have a little bit of a problem. Now the tree I think looks great. I think it looks really nice. The problem is you could see it had just a little bit of wobble and I think it's where those joints are in between our sections like this. Now my thought process was that as long as you screw these tight enough and as long as this is flat, then it should be nice sturdy connection. Where I think my issue is, is these T-nuts right here. Now, as you can see, these stick out just a little bit from the surface here. So that means the bottom of our piece of wood is not making good contact with our circular disc. The other issue is that the way these things work, unless you hammer these down perfect, it could also be canted to one direction or the other. So that means it's not screwing in straight. But I think a better solution is gonna be to go with one of these wood insert nuts. Uh, what this does, it basically makes a threaded hole the same as the T-nut does, but it goes all the way into the wood and doesn't leave anything on the surface. So we're gonna give that a try. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these out. Uh, put the insert nuts in, being really careful to make sure I get those in nice and straight. And we'll put this thing back together and hopefully it will work. And I'm happy to say once we made that change and put everything back together, we got a nice, strong, sturdy fit. And we've pretty much eliminated that wobble we were seeing before. All right guys, here is the finished product and I think it turned out great. I've seen people build these before, but I've never seen it done quite this way. And I really think this is the cleanest, nicest looking way to do it. Of course, you did see we had a little bit of trial and error and I think uh, switching from the T-nuts to the insert nuts really sturdied this thing up a lot. Now you do have to really crank down and tighten these individual pieces to make sure everything's good and tight. But once you do that, it's plenty sturdy enough for your Christmas village display or whatever else you plan to display on this tree. Now you guys saw that I did make a wooden base for this and that will be included in the plans if you get those there in the description below. But this customer actually wants this to go in a rotating Christmas tree stand. So the only thing we're gonna do different instead of the base is we're gonna screw in one of these black metal pipes and a flange onto the bottom and that should fit right into her rotating base. Um, that's going to be the only difference. She will get this wooden base to go with it just in case she decides not to use the rotating base. This one ended up right around six foot tall and it was definitely something that I'd never done before. So there was a lot of trial and error, a lot of thinking to figure this thing out. Uh, but I think we came up with a good design. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What would you have done different? What did you like about it? And don't forget guys, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell and give us a big old thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, share and subscribe and Merry Christmas.